Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very interesting video. We're going to model two pieces of furniture using a couple of extensions inside of SketchUp. The purpose of this video is to show you that there are extensions that can solve some of the modeling challenges that you may come across. Let's get started. So in order for us to model the Frank Gehry Wiggle chair, we have to get some basic information. This is a manufacturing website that offers this product. And here we can see some images and some key physical features of the chair. But this is what I'm mostly interested in, a side profile of the chair, the dimensions, as well as the material. So in order to start modeling, let's import the reference image. So the next step is to match this to one of its dimension and we'll try to match the height of the chair. Type T for the tape measure, measure a reference line. So these are the references that we're going to match our image to. So this is going to be 34. 0.25 inches press enter accept and now this is at a proper scale so the next step is to trace the profile of the chair and we're going to use the line tool as well as the, the bezier curve toolbar to trace around the profile of the chair So do your best to be as close to the profile. The more accurate you can follow this profile, the better your end result will be. I'm currently using the classic Bezier curve, which allows me to be as precise as I want to when I'm making these curves. And you don't have to be 100%, but be as close to the image as you can. So this is our outer edge profile. Make sure there are no broken links that prevents the curves from connecting. As you can see, this is a combination of broken lines and curves. So the next step is to turn all of these edges into one polyline. So we're going to select all, right click and select weld edges. And as you can see, all the edges are now connected. So moving over to the artisan subdivision tool, we have a couple of tools that we can use. One of them being the extrude edges, which is going to let me extrude this edge selection. And actually create this face profile that is very close to our chair. But if I press shift, I can toggle free move. And now I can extrude this on a green axis and extrude this by 13.75 inches. And as a result, I get this face profile that I can easily extrude and give it a thickness. Now here we can do a couple of things. We can actually go inside this group and use uh, bevels. We can use auto soften to get rid of those edges. So now that we have this clean face profile, the next key step is to extrude this profile. And that is one of the limitations of SketchUp's native extrude tool is that you can't really extrude curved edges. But here's where Artisan Extrude tool can be very useful because it allows me to not only extrude this face, but give it a thickness. So now that we pretty much have our shape, we can start to think about the materials. We know that the two materials are corrugated cardboard and the edges are made of natural looking hardboard. So a very quick way to import materials in SketchUp is just drag and drop your images in, explode so that they become actual materials. And from here, I can hold Alt, sample my texture, go inside my model and add and paint that face. Actually go back to your texture and uncheck projected so that if we try that again it will look proper now as for this we have an extension that can help with this which is sketch uv 
if we bring this over let's get a front profile of our chair and switch to parallel projection and now we can select a sketch uv right click and select the box mapping you can see that it follows pretty well the curves of the chair now obviously this feels a little bit too big so what we can do is multiply this texture so that it feels smaller now the last bit of detail that i might want to add here is add round corners and we can use bevel for that so if we go inside select bevel and we're going to add 16th of an inch with four corners that gives us complete round corners throughout the edges there we have it this is the model with the round edge looks pretty good to me very happy with these results this was a very practical workflow and you can make this even more realistic when you add photoreal materials in sketchup 2025 so now we're going to try to model this side table we got an image of its side profile and i will try my best to create this sort of organic shape using artisan tools so we're going to start with a very basic square and bring it up to the height which is about a one foot three we're going to use subdivide to create extra quad faces so now to edit this component we're going to add a sketchy fft And we'll try to do this at a four, three, four grid, which should work perfectly fine. And we'll try our best to match that organic profile that this has. And we're going to also activate um, artisan mode so that I can use these tools instead of the SketchUp natives. So Sketchy FFD is a free form distortion tool that can manipulate a mesh using control joints as you can see i am grabbing these joints and moving them around and you can see how my object is freely bending to obey these control joints so now that we have this we can actually um subdivide this add a little bit more subdivisions on this as well as here so that the transition is a little better and what I'm going to do now to make this smoother is add, add more subdivision. And now we can smooth this as much as we can until it's round and perfect. So now we're going to do the same for this top is going to be very similar. I'll admit it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Once again, the process from here is very simple. And in a similar way, I'm going to add materials. But I think you get the idea with a little bit of practice, I'm pretty sure I can get this to look exactly the same. But I think showing you how to model things like this with Artisan can help you know that there are tools that are in SketchUp that are capable of this sort of detail. And that's going to be all for this video. Hopefully you've got a lot of value of this tutorial. So if you learned something new from the video, let me know in the comment section and also comment down below what other extensions could be useful for modeling exercises like this. As always, be sure to check the description for useful links. Follow us on other social media platforms and we'll catch you guys in the next video.